Welcome back, Pokemon trainers. Professor Chaz here, the lab coat's on back order, and I'm bringing you a new feature here on the channel, the first of our Pokemon Sun and Pokemon Moon live Wi-Fi battles here in the Alola region of Gen 7. My first opponent is Pokemon trainer Leon. I'm requesting a single battle right now. I did upload earlier today saying how I'm looking for some single battles using non-legendaries, non-mythical, non-ultra beast Pokemon, and let's see what Leon has in store. Now, fully or I'm going to be fully honest here, fully admitting the fact that I'm not really expecting to win, because for one thing, now this is me using an excuse, I've been having a lot of bad luck in the world of Pokemon, but you know what, I'm not going to use that as the reason I lose, I'm starting off with the Pokemon that I want to use. I'm going to decide the rules myself here. The Pokemon I want to use are my initial six Pokemon from the, you know, my first time in the world of Pokemon as it is. I'm going to go for the single battle normal rules. Yeah, all set to level 50 of course. And I'll show you the team I'm working with. Participating team is... I don't know if I'm going to show... If it's going to be able to show them on the top. Okay, it'll show them here. Shelbert, Pikachu, Squeak, Chirp, Critter, and Rocky. My initial team from back in the Kanto days of Pokemon Blue when I got my start. That is the team I'm working with. They are good to go. And I'm going to choose... What song should we go for? I'm going to go with this song. I'm not going to tell you what it is, but you'll find out just in a moment. Now let's see what Leon is bringing... To the battle. Now I'm going to show you quickly, if it does show off on the top screen, what my Pokemon have to offer. Hopefully it does let me show that up top. Let's see what happens here. It might just be on the bottom screen. We're going to go for the summary. Does it show them? No, it's not going to show the attacks. It's not going to show the Pokemon either. Anyway, you'll see the attacks as we come into battle. I should probably do like more of a team recap sort of thing before this. In fact, one second here. I'll show you on the bottom screen. So we got Shelbert here. I've still got a minute and 15 to choose. Shelbert, our Squirtle, has the Torrent ability holding Eevee Light, and he has Scald, Rock Tomb, Icy Wind, and Rapid Spin. Next is good old Pikachu with Static ability. Light Ball is the item. Discharge, Body Slam, Thunder Wave, and Light Screen for defensiveness. Squeak, our Guts, Focus Ash holding Raticate with Double Edge, Sucker Punch, Counter, and Endeavor. We have Chirp the Pidgeot with the Keen Eye ability and holding Pidgeotite. I didn't say Mega Stones wouldn't be permitted, and I want to show that off. I've got Hurricane, Heat Wave, Tailwind, and U-Turn for Chirp. Critter the Butterfree is next with Compound Eyes, holding the Buginium Z. He's our Z user for the team. Sleep Powder, Signal Beam, Electro Web, and Tailwind. And Rocky the Sand Slash with Sand Veil, holding the Expert Belt with Dig, a Dig Knockoff, Stealth Rock, and Hone Claws. I've got 30 seconds to choose. We see a lot of flying Pokemon. I shouldn't say a lot, but a lot of Pokemon that could be weak to Stealth Rock. So I'm going to lead with Rocky, because I'm kind of limited in my choice right now. Rocky is the lead. We'll bring everyone else into the battle, of course. Let's get things started. Now, hopefully it's not going to be something that Rocky's weak to to start with. I'm still on my left-handed throwing style. I've got to remember to change that, because I am falsely representing the left-handed people of the world. I am a right-hander myself. I don't know if the webcam mirrors things or not. I might have just done the wrong hand for each thing. But anyway, Battle versus Leon. Rocky leads. Let's see what the lead is here. Hariyama. Okay, not terribly too bad. We have decent defense. I don't know if Rocky could really handle it. But let's just go ahead and fire off a Stealth Rock right now. Get those up and running. I used to watch a lot of people, well, I still watch a lot of people playing Pokemon Wi-Fi battles, and I used to see they would always want to use Stealth Rock and plan against Stealth Rock, and I had never understood why exactly. This is gonna hurt a decent amount. I never really understood why is Stealth Rock such an important thing, but then I kind of realized, you know, things with Sturdy Ability, things with Focus Sash, it's gonna snap those right out, so they can't make use of the uh, surviving a one hit from full HP. So, since we're going to go for a close combat, I'm going to go into my double resistant critter. Yeah, you know, Hariyama can learn rock type attacks, and if it's traded up from previous generations, it can have ice punch and thunder punch. Does it have anything like that? It's got heavy slam. This is going to hurt also, because we're not that heavy. Ow. Now, we are faster, though. Question is, will Leon be switching Hariyama out into something else? I think the safest bet is just to go for a Sleep Powder right now. We have the Compound Eyes boost. We should be able to land it. We should be faster than this thing. And they switch out, so I made the safe call here, unless they went into a Grass-type, which they did not. So Togekiss is going to take some Stealth Rock damage, 25%. And we put them to sleep with a nice Sleep Powder. Now, it's time for one of Critter's secret weapons from Gen 6, and the Move Tutors from back then. Since this thing is a Flying-type, we have Electro-Web. 
I think, well, since we have one turn of safety here, I'm going to... I don't know. I'm thinking, should I Tailwind to speed up? But Electro Web will slow the Togekiss down. I'm going to Electro Web to get some damage off. We are faster anyway. I'm going to lower the speed a little bit. Not a lot of damage, of course. But it is slowing down nicely. Hmm. So, Fairy and Flying. I was thinking I could go for the Buginium Z, but that really is not going to do a thing. If I go for an Electro Web again, do they have anything that resists that? Well, they have a resistance in a couple Pokemon, but... I don't think... Well, they don't have any immunity, so I'm going to just go for another Electro Web. Get some good damage off. We shouldn't miss thanks to Compound Eyes. It's only 95% accurate, but I forget. Compound Eyes boost the accuracy by a certain amount. Now, even if you wake up and take down Critter, which you're going to do, unfortunately, your speed is now in tatters. So whoever comes in next should be able to take down this Togekiss. What should I knock it out with? Hmm. Pikachu's a safe bet. Let's go to Pikachu with a nice light ball, the boosted power of the offensiveness. Would they want to switch out? No, they... Okay. Leon would not switch because if Togekiss comes back in, the Stealth Rocks takes it down. So, the safest play here is just to take this thing out. I was thinking of going for a light screen, but I'm going to play it safe. We'll just discharge. Never mind. They got extreme speed. Decent spot of damage. Well, we do paralyze with static, but it doesn't really matter because... Boom, the static, or the discharge is going to take down the Togekiss. So that is one knockout on each side thus far. Pretty even game thus far. Pretty cool. All right, what comes in? We're going to say probably the Decidueye, I'm thinking. It is resistant to electric. There it is. All right. Now, the best bet here, I'm thinking, I could switch Pikachu out. What would this thing be likely to go for? Ghost or Grass? I'm expecting... I don't know. I'm expecting Ghost. I'm going to go to Squeak. Our normal type Raticate. I guess I could have gone to Chirp. He would be immune to Ghost and resist Grass, but if Squeak takes some damage... Well, we can't hit this thing with an Endeavor. And the Doof will go for the Ghost type attack. Alright. Hmm. So the only thing we can hit this thing with is going to be Sucker Punch. Let's see what they go for. They might just switch out, too. Look how Decidueye looks. I've said this before. My starter Pokemon, of course, is going to be Water-type every single generation. But I do... I gotta say, Decidueye probably looks the best out of all the Pokemon final starters in this generation. My own opinion, of course. Alright, Pointed Stones, of course. Sucker Punch does nothing. We're going to likely see a close combat. I think... I'm going to allow Shelbert to come in and take this hit. Now, of course, this thing has decent attack power, Hariyama does, but Shelbert does have the Evio Light for boosted defense. Will it be enough? Because we're likely to see that close combat any moment now. Shelbert takes the field, everybody. There's the close combat. Come on, tank this, buddy. Look how little that did. And your defenses go down. All right. So, I do not think Shelbert is going to be fast enough to outspeed. What is the best move to make? They have a resistance in Greninja to our Water-type hits. Plus, I still have Decidueye. I'm going to go for a Rock Tomb. Now, of course, Hariyama resists it. Go for another close combat. Lower that uh, defense once again. Shelbert handles it. All right, if we land the Rock Tomb, we'll slow the speed down. I wonder, would this thing... Oh, come on. Gotta love the luck. All right. I'm gonna say Shelbert basically has to fall at this point, unfortunately. If, if he had landed that nice good old rock tomb, we might have outsped and got a torrent boosted scald attack off, but that's not the case. Okay then. So we're gonna go into... Chirp is next. If I need to, I'm gonna break out the mega evolution right now. That's gonna make up for the miss of rock tomb. What is rock tomb, 90% accurate? Yeah, I think it's 90% accurate. All right, do I want to Mega Evolve right now? Because I could try Hurricane, which is a basic 70. I could save the surprise of the Hurricane. Hmm. I'm going to Tailwind, first of all. Hariyama does escape, okay. Two Cannon. 
So we're going to get the, uh, the uh, Tailwind fired up. Toucanon takes some decent damage from the old Stealth Rocks. Now we should be able to outspeed anything. This thing could have a Beak Blast attack, of course. Fortunately, as a Mega Pidgeot, which I do want to show off, Chirp will not be doing any physical connecting damage to this Toucanon. There we go, I get to show off the Pidgeotite that I fought so hard for and bombed terribly in the Kanto X Alola competition, but we do have Mega Pidgeot, Mega Chirp on the field as the Hurricane fires off. Is it enough? It is enough to bring down the two cannon. So what could come in next? They do have the Vicavolt I did see. Did I even mention Vicavolt? I don't know if I mentioned all the Pokemon that Leon had. We do see Greninja though. This thing could have something like, uh, can I learn Aqua Jet? Because I know it can get Water Shuriken, which is a priority move. I think I'm going to tail, or so I'm going to go for a U-turn, just for super effective, and get out of here. Question is, what would I switch into? I don't usually often do the moves that uh, do damage and switch out, like U-turn and Volt, uh, Volt Switch, but they certainly have their uses. So Chirp escapes. What are we going to see from this thing? I'm expecting ice, maybe? Hmm. I'm gonna go into Squeak, let him take a hit. Let's see what this thing goes for. They didn't go for a speed priority move. Going for extra sensory, okay. Too bad they don't have protein, because they could have become a psychic type and I could have sucker punched it for some good damage. Let us. Well, we're gonna be faster with the Tailwind. I think Double Edge might bring them down. Let's give it a try. Come on, Squeak, you got this, buddy. A non-Alolan Raticate battling in the Alola region. I like this. There was... Oh, you do have priority move. No! Well, Squeak will handle this, I think, as long as we don't get any criticals. It's going to be close. But I remember when we were, like, there, and I was mentioning all the Alola forms. Oh, it's only four hits. Right, right. I thought it was going to be automatically five hits. But when they were mentioning all the Alola forms, I thought, is it going to be if I send Squeak into the Alola region? Oh, he's still there. Is he going to become automatically the Alola form? But nope, he stays as he is, which is very cool. Vicavolt comes in. Now, from what I understand, these things are on the slower side. But they could have something like a speed move I don't know about. Let's go with an Endeavor to bring them down to 3 HP. As long as we are quicker, and we are... Vicavolt goes down to 3 as it goes for Agility. Okay. If this works out well... I think we just got to knock it on this. If they go for an attack, we're going to Sucker Punch. Look at that! Squeak took down something else, too! Excellent! I love that! Sorry, Leon. I mean, you know, I don't want to... I'm not... I don't want to try to gloat or anything, but I just, like... I've had this strategy for Squeak for quite a while. Trying to bring down, you know, tough Pokemon and stuff with, like, the... Uh, Focus Sash idea with Endeavor and Counter and Sucker Punch and all that. I think Squeak has done his job at this point. I'm just going to go for Double Edge for some boosted damage on this Hariyama. We're going to knock ourselves out from the recoil, of course. And down he goes. So whatever the Hariyama goes for, it's not going to matter. Unless it went for like a stat boosting attack or something. Just for close combat. Alright, so you keep your defenses where they are. What else is left on Leon's side? Because, of course, the best bet here is go back into Chirp. Hurricane should be able to take this Hariyama down. We still haven't seen... Well, we've seen everything. Decidueye is next. Let's just go for the Hurricane. We'll bring down the Hariyama. We should, anyway. I'm, I'm going to be surprised if this doesn't do the trick. So, Decidueye is all that's left. We haven't seen a Z-Attack yet. We haven't even used ours, and Critter's already gone down. So, at this point, Decidueye is the last remaining Pokemon. Hurricane definitely gets the knockout. But I want to give the Heat Wave a try, just to show that off, too. Might as well. It is fully accurate thanks to the ability of No Guard with Mega Pidgeot. Which, I've said before, I don't really like that as an ability. Like, I don't know. I like the fact that all of your moves will hit, but the opponent could go for... I don't know if, like, Sheer Cold is, uh, boosted by No Guard, but other moves, like, you know, low accuracy moves, are going to automatically hit your Pidgeot. And that hurts, but I think the recoil takes the Decidueye down itself, and it does... And that is our first Wi-Fi battle, viewer battle, on the channel. We get to show Mega Pidgeot. I want to say thanks, Leon, for the game. And unfortunately, it wasn't very, you know... I guess I was going to say it wasn't very one-sided. No, that's actually a bad thing. It wasn't as balanced as it could have been. But thanks for the game, Leon. And if you're interested, folks, out there in watching some more viewer battles, stay tuned to the channel, of course. And if you want to get involved in some of these yourselves, 
just stay tuned for whenever I op or I post a video, upload a video saying that I'm looking for viewer battles, and we'll go from there. So I want to say thanks for watching today's episode. Feel free to check out some more episodes that I have done in the links during the outro, plus link to subscribe to the channel if you're not currently subscribed. Check out some more daily Pokemon content, and I say daily with air quotes because sometimes I kind of miss a day here and there, but I'm trying to get on track with it. But once again, thanks, Leon, for the battle, and I hope you enjoyed it. I had fun with it myself, and I guess that is it for today. So, Professor Chaz is now signing off. Once again, thanks for watching today's video, folks, and I'll catch you next time.